Santa's coming to town. Santa! Oh my god! Ho, oh, oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, oh. ho, Santa just knocked at the door. Drop this. Okay, while I'm unboxing this, I want you to do one thing for me. Try to remember this feeling, this feeling of unbound, uncontrollable and irrational excitement that you get when you, you know, when you see a person that you haven't seen in a long while. If you wait for this concert that, of your favorite artist that finally comes to your town and you're just about to see him or her. And, um, or when you're waiting for Jeez, this is complicated. Just want to be careful here. Or when you're waiting for your dream car and it's finally getting delivered. Well, this here, well, I I'm, I'm, should definitely not have an unboxing video. I feel like many people say that when they do that on YouTube. Here, finally, oh, oh, jeez. Don't give me a knife, this is like dangerous here. Five minutes later. Well, this, ladies and gentlemen, is my dream car. It's the red Komodo. Uh, it's a brand new, small, super small, super compact and extremely powerful little cinema camera that it's not even released yet. I have goosebumps here. <laughs> it's like legit. If you haven't heard about red cameras, those are basically the industry standard for digital cinema productions and and uh, there, this camera actually is currently being deployed on multiple Hollywood productions, including The Matrix 4. For those of you who are intimately familiar with red cameras, are uh, possibly just here to see some footage. Holy shit. So why don't we take this bad boy. What you gonna do? This, is, this is happening. I, I have a red camera. <laughs> uh, why don't we take this bad boy out for a spin and when I'm back, I share with you why I decided to go with this camera over all these other crazy camera releases this summer. It's, it's the season for camera releases. Let's, let's check out what this thing can do. See you right back.
what do you think? I hope you enjoyed this footage, uh, but let me start with a few disclaimers before I jump into the reasons why I personally got this camera. And the first one being, this is a better model. The camera itself, the hardware is final, and this is what you will be able to buy except for the color. But the software is in beta and there will be still changes made up until the point uh, when this camera is being released. And in fact, uh, Red has been really good like continuously updating the software for their cameras. This one in particular is part of the Stormtrooper series, which Red always releases with um, their new cameras. It's a very, very limited series for people who want to get their hands on very early on a camera and are willing to test and break it and put it through their paces. No official specs yet. You cannot buy this camera as of right now. The black version of this one, the production model, will hopefully go on sale in the next couple of months for about $6,000, um, obviously pending any delays due to COVID-19. Disclaimer number two, this video itself will be just very high level and I will make more videos about this camera and I have a few fun ideas, hopefully you will enjoy those. So uh, if you mind, hit that subscribe button and uh, that notification bell so that you will get reminded whenever I upload and I will be, it will be regularly. And third, I'm a complete new and newbie in this red ecosystem. So it is a very, very different workflow, especially when it comes to grading and handling the data files. Please bear with me if you're a seasoned red user. Uh, and if you're not, come on this journey with me. Let's explore it together and learn. That actually brings me to the very first and arguably most important reason why I got finally a red camera. Okay, reason number one, it's another list. Listicles are a thing on YouTube, right? Well, the number one reason for me why I was, always wanted to get a red camera is the image quality, the image, the sensor that red designs, the color science behind it, and the red raw codec, the R3D files that have so much latitude. You can really push and pull these 16-bit RAW files and really achieve a look that is quite unique to these red cinema cameras. Uh, a few specs, facts that are confirmed. Uh, obviously, you can shoot in red RAW here, the R3D files, but you can also shoot in ProRes, not simultaneously like the bigger cameras they produce. But if you want to have smaller file sizes, certainly you can shoot in ProRes. But I was actually quite, quick side note, I was actually quite concerned that these RAW files bug down my iMac or my MacBook Pro, but surprisingly, they play back fairly well. Otherwise, create proxies and you'll be gold, gold, golden. Good, both. On to reason number two, why I finally decided to pull the trigger for a RED camera is its size. You know, the DSMC2 bodies, the currently existing cinema cameras that, that RAD is producing, they are big. They are, you know, like twice the size of this. And they eat also batteries, big, big batteries like crazy. So this camera is really comparable to, to certain DSLRs and all the uh, Blackmagic Pocket cinema cameras, 6K. It is very compact and you can easily take it on a, on a hike. And this is one of the reasons why, I, because I want to use it in the nature when I'm traveling as this really compact small camera that I just have in my backpack. All around my neck I actually have like uh, pins that I so I can put a neck strap around it. Um, super easy to handle. It is actually quite a bit heavier than what it looks like because of the batteries, because of the handle and its robust design. And the third reason for me is its modularity and not necessarily like in the traditional sense where um, clearly like you have to build out these cameras to make them usable. What the RED ecosystem is kind of famous or infamous for is that you often had to buy certain accessories from them in order to make make the cameras usable and those accessories were fairly expensive so what's really cool about this camera is is that it's using existing third-party accessories uh, let's call it that way uh, so that you can you know, like just tap into an existing ecosystem one of them 
uh, the batteries. It's using the BP uh, battery series from Canon. You want to get the BP 9955s or the 975s. Um, they're using CF cards, CF fast cards. I got these from Angelbird. Whoa, this is hot. So you see, there's a lot going on in there. But again, existing medium, you don't need to buy these red mags that were in like at least twice the price if not more expensive per gigabyte than uh, in like these very fast CFAST cards. It's using an RF mount, very interesting. Right now I have a lot of EF lenses so that was uh, great for me to because there are existing adapters and you know, like for future RF mount uh, lenses you can easily adopt them and, and put them on there because that's the future of where the Canon glass is going. And number four, it's a smaller reason. This camera has a global shutter. You know, when you have a rolling shutter, which most cameras have, you get this jello effect when, for example, a car or bus passes or you shoot outside, like in a, in a moving car or so, everything is a little bit bent because the, the readout of the sensor happens line by line, so, you know, like, not at the same time so everything is a little bit bent what this global shutter allows you to is like have way better motion images if that makes sense of moving objects off out of moving objects and i think this is a very it's a big feat of innovation that red pulled off here to get this global shutter and this amazing dynamic range at the same time because usually global shutter cameras suffer in their dynamic range i don't know what witchcraft is going on here it's definitely hot um, but you see actually side note it's very quiet red cameras notoriously also fairly loud um, this one is actually fairly quiet I'm like holding it now really close to the microphone and I don't think I don't think you hear it. it's more likely that you hear my fridge which is next to me here very very nice that uh, you know like you can mount a microphone and don't have to worry about that it's picking up any any fan noise here and then reason number five and that in fact I didn't know about this before getting very engaged uh, around this camera is its community it blew my mind that how forthcoming and sharing an open uh, Jared land who is the the president of red was and how welcoming and experience obviously the rat community is and how much uh, they are sharing and, and answer questions and and frankly that was quite a surprise to me that such an established company is is taking this very very different approach of like launching a product but also like listening to the community listening to all the filmmakers and DPs out there uh, on their thoughts, on their needs, and, and, and giving these cameras into the hands very early on in the production process so that, uh, that they get the feedback from the community that they're really taking in. But before we wrap up, uh, let's quickly also address like who this camera was originally made for and who I think will likely benefit from this. Originally, and Jared shared this, this camera was made as a crash cam for big Hollywood productions. The Netflix standard is not to have a GoPro and they can only show like so many frames of GoPro footage before it falls apart and takes you out of the movie. So the industry was looking for a small compact camera that has the image quality of their other cameras that they're using, the other red cameras that can be just like put into fire and into you know, like into a crash car and get the footage and get it done in a, in a very reliable and robust way. So that's, that's what it's been designed for and that's what it's been used. As mentioned before, they're using this as, as a crash cam on the Matrix 4 that they're shooting. And uh, Steven Sonderberg though, they, he shot a full entire movie with this camera and I don't know if you've seen the Brad Pitt SNL skit where he played Anthony Fauci. That was also shot on the Red Komodo. On the other side, likely many existing RED users that have the DSMC2 cameras like the Gemini or the Helium 8Ks or so, they're using this as a B cam because obviously it matches perfectly uh, their other big cameras in terms of the color signs. And uh, it's you know, like it's just a nice little addition to them. 
The third group I would say are also indie filmmakers, music videos, because you can fly this thing on, on, on a gimbal just so easily. Uh, I just tried it out and uh, it's actually one of my favorite setups. It comes with an autofocus, I'm tweaking it, it's not perfectly working yet, but autofocus will be on this camera and flying it on a Ronin S is, is just so much fun. I've, I dusted out this gimbal, I haven't used it in a while. Uh, but it perfectly balances and you see my plate is still on there and it's 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 just a lot of joy and uh, This brings me to the fourth group which is uh, possibly also like Travel and documentary filmmakers who need a very small package and can you know, like take this camera With them everywhere and the fifth group is what I'm part of uh, people who are new to the red ecosystem who are who want to push their boundaries who wanna you know, like challenge themselves to get better quality images and also don't wanna lug around a big camera or invest too, too much. I mean, like, this is freaking expensive, but very excited about what's coming. I know there's a lot of passion, there's a lot of lovers of RED, there's a lot of haters of RED. Obviously, like I'm more on the lover side now as I'm exploring this clearly, like it was always a dream of mine. Please be civil in the comments below, but since we are exploring this together, please let me know what you want to know about this camera, what you want to learn, if you have any ideas what I should shoot. Uh, let me know down in the comment section if you have any questions. I will, if there's enough questions, I make a dedicated video about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. It's a little bit different from what you've seen on my channel before, but I hope you enjoyed it. I reckon there will be also many people who haven't watched my content yet, so please feel free to check out the stuff I've been uploading over the past years. If you like it, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And as always, thanks so much for watching, no matter wherever and whenever you are around this beautiful planet. Thank you. Bye-bye. Shoot. Do more. Film more. Oh! Stephanie, Santa just dropped this.